All right. Uh, good morning. Uh, we're excited to be back at Missouri Western State University to kick off the 2023 uh, campaign. Uh, the university, the staff does a fantastic job of welcoming uh, us up here, uh, as well as taking care of all, all of our needs. Uh, it's great to get to see the first uh, full team practice uh, today. Uh, we're excited about the upcoming season. With that, I'll open it up for questions. Yeah, uh, that's something that Brett Veach and his staff really handle. I, I'm not involved in that. Look, we, we love Chris, and uh, when he decides to report, uh, we'll welcome him. Uh, I don't want to get into speculating on you know you know when that'll happen or if it'll happen. We had talked to Mark Mark the other day, and he mentioned that obviously stadium-wise, all of your options are on the table, whether it's build new where you are, build new elsewhere, yeah. or, or renovate and upgrade everything. He says that's the preference. Is that you've, you've said that before too? Is that kind of your still preference? Do you feel optimistic that's a possibility? Uh, yeah, we do feel optimistic about that. Uh, we spent a couple years uh, studying the structural integrity of the stadium, and earlier this year um, we preliminarily concluded that Arrowhead could be renovated um, and extend the life for up to another 25 years. Um, all three options are uh, still on the table, uh, but we're working hard uh, behind the scenes uh, to, to try to get in a position where uh, if the Royals make a decision uh, later this summer, as they've said they're going to do, we'll be in a position to, to go with them if they decide to go with a public vote. Mr. Hunt, you live pretty close to AT&T Stadium in Arlington. You see all the events that go in there. Is, would there be a benefit to having an ability to open the world, have an open, close situation? Uh, certainly one of the benefits of a dome stadium is that you're weather protected, uh, which does give you the ability uh, to, to host more events. Um, and, you know, we've seen that whether it's SoFi or AT&T Stadium, uh, they host a lot of events. Uh, I would point out that GEHA Field at Arrowhead is hosting a lot of events uh, this summer. We're expecting to have a very busy summer uh, next year. So not having a roof doesn't preclude uh, having many of those uh, events, but uh, certainly if you, ha you had a roof, you could probably do more during the winter. We've seen a number of teams around the league needed to alter the uniforms. You guys have always taken a traditional approach. What, what's your thought process? Uh, yeah, it, it was something that my dad felt very strongly about uh, going all the way back to the uh, early 60s. Uh, he wanted a lot of continuity uh, in the uniforms, and we've tried to maintain that uh, over the year. Uh, I think we have a very distinct brand uh, with the red and white and uh, don't anticipate uh, steering away from that anytime soon. Clark, Clark we hear from, from Andy how he likes to you know, get up here and get, get the team away from everybody in Kansas City and build the camaraderie. What are your thoughts on the team being here and just being away? Yeah, yeah. well, I, I mentioned in my opening remarks uh, how excited we are to be up here. Uh, it's been a fantastic relationship uh, with the university. Uh, like Andy, I'm a big believer in the value of getting the organization uh, away from Kansas City. Uh, the great thing about being here in St. Joe is we're so close. So as you can hear the, uh, the fans today, we've got a you know, tremendous number of fans here today and we'll have that throughout camp so they can drive up. Uh, but you have the, the team away and it really creates an opportunity, I think, for the players to bond with each other, a chance for the new players to really get integrated into the organization. Uh, so I think there are a lot of positives with it. Yeah, uh, a absolutely. Um, uh, one of the highlights of the year for me is getting to address the team uh, at the opening uh, meeting, which was la last night. Uh, and as I, I, I did that and just sort of looked out, I felt a lot, lot of excitement. It's, you know, it's great to be back. <clears throat> there are always a bunch of new players, right? So it's a, it's a new team every year. Uh, we're obviously defending a championship this year. Uh, it's a great opportunity, something that hasn't been done in the National Football League for all, almost 20 years. Uh, so I'm every bit as excited as the players and coaches to be here. Uh, that that was part part of the message to the team is uh, you know we have a tremendous opportunity this year 
uh, to defend a championship. Uh, it's hard to do. Uh, we had a chance uh, three years ago and, and didn't get it done, and, and hopefully we'll be able to do it this year. Matt, Clark, after Super Bowl 54, the pandemic made having training camp with fans impossible. How meaningful is it to share the championship with fans here at St. Joe after Super Bowl 57? Yeah, uh, it, it's so exciting, and I think it's something that really benefits the team, uh, particularly the players, having the fans out here. It adds a, a level of energy uh, to, to the practices uh, that you don't get that. Uh, it's a very different environment, just thinking about the OTAs, um, you know, not having the fans there versus having the fans today. Uh, I think we're expecting maybe record crowds uh, this year. Uh, certainly uh, with good justification coming coming off the Super Bowl win. Uh, so it's great great to be here and great to be able to share this with our amazing fan base. All right, we'll go Nate, Fahe, and finish with Adam. Clark, um, I believe that there's nobody on the team right now that is currently the highest paid player at their position. I know the last person probably was Patrick at the quarterback position. Obviously, there's been a lot of players since then. When you go into a contract extension discussion with a certain player uh, on the team who obviously is in high regards such as Chris, is there a philosophical approach you have towards um, obviously paying what they're worth and not necessarily being at the top of the line at their position? Or do you try to treat it on an individual basis given the circumstances at that point? Yeah. Uh, we, we really don't think about it in the context of who's the highest paid player in the league. We think about it in the context of the Kansas City Chiefs and what's best for the organization, not only this year, but as we go forward. Uh, one of the challenges in the National Football League is the salary cap, um, and, and it makes it tough to keep a championship team together. Uh, that's something that Brett and his staff have really focused on. I think they've done a, a fantastic job, and uh, you know that's just how we're gonna, gonna view it going forward. Bye. Yeah, <clears throat> well, seven or eight years ago, we spent a whole lot more time talking about the 60s and 70s uh, uh, that, that, than I do now. Um, I still include uh, the history of the organization because I think it's important uh, for the young players to understand you know, where the team came from uh, in the early 1960s as a charter member of the Amer American Football League. Uh, but certainly, uh, it's great to be able to talk about the success that we've had over the last four or five years, um, and also the success that we've had over the last 10 years with, with Andy. Uh, one of the points I always make to him is, you know, how blessed they are to have a Hall of Fame coach and really one of the best coaching staffs in the National Football League. And if they'll follow the lead of the coaches, uh, good things are going to happen. Adam, last question. Yeah, that's never come up in my conversations uh, with Andy. And I, I think as I recall his answer, somebody asked him the question. And I don't think he had stopped to, to think about, you know, that, that subject. And, and it sort of uh, had a life of its own uh, there for, for a few weeks until Andy said, no, I, I'm not thinking about that. You know, as I see Andy, he remains incredibly energized and excited. Um, he's all about the Kansas City Chiefs and trying to get us back to the playoffs and win another Super Bowl. And uh, I think he has as much energy uh, and passion as I've seen in the 10 plus years that he's been with us. I, I really don't, uh, and, I, and I hope I don't for a long time. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Thanks, Clark. Yeah. Thank you.